This is China, and this is the axis of evil. That's uh, Korea, North Korea, Iran, and Iraq. So what's happened to America over the years is that the military corporations have become so powerful, they've totally taken over the economy. And they actually steal the taxpayers' money, because most of the money they get for the weapons comes from the taxpayers. That's why America has no free medical care system. That's why 43 million people have no health insurance and they die in hospital parking lots of diabetic coma. I see them. I know. I mean, I practice medicine there. Patients, people can't afford antibiotics for their dying children. And I practiced at Harvard Medical School. So now these corporations and, and the four main ones are Lockheed Martin, Boeing, you think they make planes, they make weapons and missiles, Raytheon and Northrop Grumman. And not only are they, do they make these nuclear weapons and all the weapons in Iraq, but they are making the missile defense system. So you can hit a missile down with an anti-missile missile. It doesn't work, but they've spent $9 billion so far on that recently. And they're about to put weapons in space and fight world war from space down to Earth and dominate space. So 5% of the Earth's population are going to totally dominate space. We play a major role in that, orchestrating it through Pine Gap. Pine Gap would launch the nuclear weapons. Pine Gap would orchestrate the missile defense system. And Pine Gap is orchestrating the weaponization of space. And I wrote a book about that recently called War in Heaven. We are an integral part of what they're doing. So they control everything. Now, it's interesting because when people um, leave the Pentagon, they often get jobs in the military corporations. They feather their nests when they're in the Pentagon, they go and get jobs. Or people in the Congress often end up as lobbyists for the military corporation. That's called the revolving door syndrome. They go from Pentagon to corporations to, you know, the Congress. The revolving door syndrome. And it's also called the Iron Triangle. And I wrote about that in a book called Missile Enemy years ago, which the generals hated because of the title. You know, anyone what it's derived from? Freud's expression? <laughs> penis envy? He, Freud said that women envy men because they don't have a penis. Well, I just took that to use it as missile envy because when you see the missiles coming out of their silos, they look like you know what. And the generals hated it, but that book was on every single shelf in the Pentagon. Anyway, so I talk about that, and in the last book, The New Nuclear Danger, George Bush's Military <coughs> Industrial Complex, I talk a lot about the military industrial complex, which is really running the world. And that's why this war game thing in uh, Shoalwater Bay, where I've just been, is so serious. And that's why we're being co-opted by these corporations who are coming down here and taking us over. We're about to lose our soul, let alone our sovereignty and our integrity, without us even knowing what's going on. Because Howard doesn't tell us, and I think Ryan is probably going to be just as bad. Yeah. A lot of people are politicians and professionally postulating that nuclear power is the silver bullet, that it's a finite resource. And I'm not sure, quite sure what the issue is probably not better, but how long, if everything was around nuclear energy, the biggest I've heard is that it would probably last about 10 to 20 years. Nine. All our electricity was generated by nuclear power now. We've got nine years' supply. It's a very finite resource. Your questions are excellent. And then we've got the waste for an extra yeah. half a million years. That's Doug. Yeah. And it causes global warming. It's a substantial quantity of global warming. It's created by nuclear power. And the nuclear power plant can't operate without emitting continuously radioactive materials into the air and water. So if you live near one, you're at risk of getting cancer. You can't grow vegetables near there because your vegetables will be radioactive and fruit. But most politicians don't understand. Yeah. Doc, how do you see uh, the ending of corporate lobbying and political parties as a way to disassemble this military industrial complex? Um, with great difficulty. But I've been reading some interesting articles lately about global warming. Because I've been to two business conferences lately, big businessmen, and they get up and say, if we can't make money out of saving the earth from global warming, we're not going to do it. They say it. It's like me saying, well, if I can't make money out of treating you, well, I, I won't do it. You know? Which 
takes my breath away. So what is coming along the pipe, as they say in America, is that in order to save the planet, and things are so serious, that government is going to have to step in and regulate these businesses because over the past 20 or 30 years, deregulation has been such that government hardly can tell them what to do. They run themselves. But in order to save the in order to save the planet, we're going to have to move much more to a centralised form of government, a socialist, if you will, what we've always had in this country with a happy mix of, you know, laissez-faire capitalism, but mostly, you know, free medical care, free education, the whole thing. But that governments, it, it will be a natural evolutionary process as things become more and more acute. I mean, look at the floods in Britain now. In the middle of summer, people are dying. They've got instead of being drowned. This is well. It's what was predicted. I wrote a book about this in 1992 called "If You Love This Planet," and all of this was predicted, and it's happening. So, I think that that in political evolutionary terms, that's what's going to happen. Now, whether it will happen in time or not, I don't know. That's number one. Number two, there are people like you who have the vision. And the courage, I think, if I look at you, I think I can see it, to lead a revolution. And I mean a revolution. I've led three revolutions in my life. Peaceful, Gandhian, wise, but by God, you can turn countries upside down. Yeah. Have you uh, had any threats made to you? Or recently? Any, yeah, well, recently. <laughs> I mean, you said it on big people's toes, what we say. Yeah, I had eight death threats in the 80s. I used to run off the stage if someone's stood up belligerent with a funny sort of lump in his pocket. Um, there was a guy who wrote to me and said, if you come to Ira, you know, I'm going to have to kill you. So the FBI, we had to notify them. They kept him in his house for three weeks when I was there. Um, I don't think I'm powerful enough or influential enough now to kill. What's more, I'm nearly 69. I've got heart disease and I don't really care. They want to kill me? They can. So I've got to die sooner or later. And so you reckon you know, they'll wait you out? What? You reckon they'll wait you out? I don't know. But, uh, you know, I've got six grandchildren and I'm a paediatrician. I'm potentially all the world's children are my, my patients. So I think when you lose your fear of death, then they have nothing over you at all. Yeah. And I don't have a fear of death. Yeah. I just want to ask a question. When you said you had... Um, you know, the crews, and there was no one protecting you. Had the what? You know, the oh, crews. outside Indian Point, yeah. yeah. What's to stop someone thinking they're already and just going, gee, we can save a lot of money here and just, you know, blow that up. A couple of those, a couple of crews just have a lunch at the same time. Just, you know, what about the weapons? If they don't need to get rid of the weapons, they can just hit, hit Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, with well, nuclear power plants, you know, you've got atom bombs all over the place. I so mean, why wouldn't someone... Well, I don't know why it hasn't happened yet, to be quite frank, because there are lots of time ways you can melt the reactor down. They're all in the book. You can cut off the external electricity supply that circulates the cooling water. That happened in Sweden in July last year. They lost it. I think lightning struck it. They have huge diesel generators the size of this sort of church, each one. Two failed to start, and 20 minutes into the accident, they finally got the third going. That was two minutes from a Chernobyl-style meltdown. Mm -hmm. Two minutes. And the head of the reactor was so freaked out. I mean, they closed down five of the ten reactors in Sweden. That, that was an accident, but it's very easy to chop off the electricity supply. Or, you know, or you can train to be a, a, an operator and get into the control room and press the wrong switches. I mean, it's absolutely sitting there ready to be done. Furthermore, if you think about war now, if the Second World War was fought today, Europe would be uninhabitable for the rest of time. 